Vi har några evenemang kvar för våren på Konstakademin. Om en vecka så kommer vi ha en föreläsning med arkitektkontoret Topotec. Och det är Martin Rein Kano som kommer hit och föreläser. Efter det så har vi ett uppehåll. Då är det en, en torsdag den 26 när det är helgdag och ingen föreläsning. Och därefter så har vi Langarita och Navarro från Madrid som föreläser. Och det är egentligen då vi börjar närma oss slutet på årets föreläsningsserie som slutar med en, en spansk eh, bonanza, eller jag säga, men två dagars eh, eh, koncentrerat program kring arkitektur och museer eh, som vi arrangerar tillsammans med Spanska ambassaden och det är den 8 och 9 juni, så två dagar. Men ikväll, I am happy to introduce uh, our speaker who is Marie-José van Hee uh, from Belgium, together with Dirk Jaspert, who is uh, a structural engineer. We have been trying to arrange this for almost two years, and I'm really happy that it was possible to make it finally. Uh, uh, of course, the pandemic has been in the way. Uh, um, the uh, title of, of the lecture is More Home, More Garden, Structure Matters. Uh, Marie-José van Hee um, started, uh, went to the school in Ghent at the Institute of St. Lucas and uh, was finished in 75 or early 70s and has since then been uh, uh, having her own office. And uh, Dirk Jaspert and Marie-José has been working for almost 30 years together. We are really happy that you are here and uh, let's get on. Be working. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> um, yes. Um, well, here you see a photograph from some more than 30 years ago where we are together on a building site and that's what we are been doing, working together for most of the projects that are in the office. And... Um, ah, okay. And one of the projects we've been doing together, and that's not only me as an architect and Dirk as an engineer, but also together with Paul Robrecht and Hilde Dam, is in the center of the city in Ghent. We have been doing uh, yeah, a wonderful place uh, with... Nah. This place, we've been doing first a competition and the competition was about making a parking site in the beginning of the 90s. And our answer to that question was we never will build a parking on that central part of the city uh, because it was really the heart of the city and uh, we were jumped out of the competition. But uh, afterwards, when they had chosen an architect's office, the people of Ghent had started to, um, yes, to 
revolt against the idea of making a, park, a parking on that area. And they have been uh, doing away the project and started up a new competition. And well, in two steps, we, we did win that competition. And the idea had to do with the part of the city, where, a medieval part of the city where everything is fully constructing. Even around the churches, there were buildings. And we wanted to introduce one building that was going back in the historical idea of, of two small places that were on the area and to, to move the building that way that you could, in a certain way, refine the context of that medieval small places. And those both places are coming together under that roof. And together with that, we wanted to introduce a park going back to the lower uh, level of the city, because since medieval times, they had been highing up the level of the city. At the same time, we had to reorganize public transport and other things. So these were sketches from the beginning. And then there was coming the idea of the double gable that had to do with the facade of the town hall, who also have a double gable roof. And then we moved those two gables. You have a profile from a higher and a lower, and the both sides are uh, skipped, so that you have a roof that we did keep it uh, horizontal on the, on, on the lines of the roof. And then I leave it to Dirk, because one of the most important things here was, if you want to make a roof, we want a roof for communication of the people of the city, and if you want to have this, we, we need it to make that big span over that area, and uh, but I like, I like Dirk is talking about what we were looking for. I'll try to explain it a little bit. Um, the aim was, in fact, also to have a, a building, a roof, in fact, the double gabled roof, on four legs, and it should span 40 meters in the long direction, about 18 meters in the other direction. And um, the character of it uh, was chosen to be wooden. So it, I w immediately got inspired by these beautiful uh, paintings uh, that I once saw in an exhibition uh, of John Sohn, about John Sohn, and these Rhine bridges that were developed like that. And we, we, we started discussing this. And we came up with these kind of models, as you see on, on the right side, which, uh, which in fact turned out to be too archaic. I was in fact uh, frustrated, uh, and I know you didn't ask us to talk about my frustrations, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, in trying to find a, a way of um, doing this completely wooden. But there was a very double aspect about it. It should have this kind of uh, relation to a medieval uh, volume, and in the meanwhile, it should exceed this by far. And so it was uh, very difficult, and it turned out to be impossible to do this in wood without cross connections, because now the span is organized, in fact, only in the long direction. And that is something we probably will well, go on, Jose, and you can, maybe you can talk. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so the, the solution turned out to be a, a kind of a, a truss system that works in the long direction. It's not in fact a truss. You should call it a discrete shell structure, because if it would have been concrete, it would just have been an M-shaped uh, volume, of course, with different heights, spanning in the long direction. And now the, 
let's say, the continuity of the material is being replaced by uh, discrete members in steel, in steel sections connected uh, to one another in such a way that they span in the long direction, supporting one another and, in fact, behaving as if it were one shell structure. So it's spanning in the long direction. At the edges of the long direction, you have these crosses, which, of course, deal with transversal or lateral stability. And in the long direction, you have this open underneath, this open structure, which just has this kind of suspended uh, V-shape in the middle part. And, uh, well, it's also... It, need, it needed to be stiffened also because it's a long, huge facade which, of course, receives a lot of wind load from the side, on the long side, and then you need to stiffen this. And stiffening them, maybe I can use... Uh, is this the pointer? Uh, well, I don't know where to push it. Uh, okay, there? Okay. Is it? Yes. Uh, so you see this V well, this M shape, in fact, the central V shape, and then you see on the sides these uh, smaller, in fact, Virendale beams. Virendale, you know them, said, and they are resisting, in fact, the wind load from a side. But this allowed us to avoid any kind of cross direction, which would have uh, been spoiling the spatial, I would say, the yeah, the 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 astonishing spatial uh, experience uh, being below it. And you can see this afterwards, in, I think, in the, in the appearance when everything is covered. But so what was the frustration? I, I, I didn't manage to find a completely wooden solution to it without a cross-directional uh, cross support for it. And in steel you can do this. And in steel you can do this with limited dimensions and afterwards covering it and seeing that the whole thing has this kind of spatial appearance as it now has. I do have to remind you of, you have this large canopy in the Woodland Cemetery by Gunnar Asplund. And uh, when we visited, I saw, uh, you see this wooden structure on it. But the dimensions of them are so small that you can hardly imagine this is really structure. So I checked it afterwards and I found some pictures from the working site when it was present, and it's a completely steel structure. And afterwards, there was, uh, in fact, attached to it a wooden ceiling, which appears to be a structure, but it's not at all. It's just a steel structure which has a, a wooden ceiling, which pretends to be a wooden structure. So it's very funny working for architects. Uh, okay, but Jose can go on. <laughs> okay. So, um, well, in fact, to place that building, we have been working very minutious on the dimensions and directions to create special views. Uh, for example, here to the tower of the post office, but you can walk around or under the building and have framed views that were important for us to, uh, to bring in. And we added also a fireplace because for us it was the symbol of a place for the people of Ghent and tourists and everybody to come together. And the mayor is giving, with New Year, a reception for all the people of Ghent. And it's an, and the symbol of community by a fireplace was very important for us. So one of that big legs is, uh, concrete legs, is a fireplace. There's a bit of view from upstairs where you have the green part with the trees in it and then you can see both places that we... No. Yeah, okay. Was it? Yeah. So you have that place and that place beside. And for, at a certain moment, you, you really get impressed yourself by the idea that you're making a, play, a building on a very special place, a historical place in the city. 
and we want it to be like a, yeah, an example of a jewel uh, coffin. And uh, by that we had been introducing also the little openings in the, in the roof and the facades so that you have that reflection of light from outside in during day. So you're not looking in a black roof top and the other side out in the evening. In the beginning, people of Ghent was very against the idea of that modern thing and they called it a sheep shed. And, um, but now, if we should say, move it, uh, move it out, they, they would be against it to be moved out. Because there's a lot of people coming under and a lot of, a, a lot, a lot of a activities going on nowadays. So that's a photograph of how that context is related to the, the form of the building. And here we are in Antwerp. Oh. Of top of uh, the Modenasi. And that's a historical photograph on the left of the building that had been transformed during ages. And the last thing that happened in it was a kind of a working place for uh, pe people uh, doing all kinds of uh, handwork. And it was filled up by uh, layers and platforms and completely, uh, yeah, uitgeliefd. Okay. And one of the most important things is how can we reorganize that building? In, well, here the question was to make a museum for the fashion. Uh, the administration of it, the library and the school, the fashion school, the last years of the, well, it's a well-known school internationally, Antwerp School of Fashion. And um, we, how do we manage to bring all that people f on all that levels in the, in the building? And the most important thing was to do it by stairs instead of always taking an elevator, and then um, well, I was thinking about walking on when you're walking on to the top of a of a hill, and um, every th every time you are coming on a platform, you you can look back where you started off. So that's why the staircase are never uh, suspended on each other, but they are going up next to each other. And the center of the building, in the origin, was an open area with a glass roof on it. And that's what we did bring back, so we could give natural light to uh, the center of the building. Here are some sketches by the research of how to introduce that staircase has been a long way. And yeah, and I will leave it to Dirk because he, he, we needed to build something that was uh, well connected to the old building. And yeah, okay. uh, you this, can this time it was not frustrating. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and so there was the large triangle in the middle of the existing building uh, where we had to remove a lot of things that were first of all in the way uh, for the large spatial development of this staircase. Uh, but also we had to arrange very well an, an a large amount of different levels of limited height, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to uh, build it within the building volume. Uh, and in the meanwhile, we had to provide it with um, an additional foundation because we couldn't rely on the existing foundations to put on the new loads. Uh, so we developed a kind of 
a foundation system which exists from in fact, all the reservoirs we needed underneath it, rainwater, uh, septic tank, and whatever. Uh, and so this large lower side of it, I will try to... The large lower side of it is in fact a double... Li it's a kind of a sandwich uh, which acts as a foundation. And then we could build up from there this kind of steel, of steel uh, structure you could see in the former uh, images, uh, which allowed us to, and you will see this maybe in another, s several levels above one another, just with a very thin uh, steel deck, as you would expect, uh, for instance, in ships or so, you see them sometimes. It's ripped um, uh, steel sections, just a flat, fl a flat plate with a T-section welded underneath or something like that. And, uh, and this allowed us to, with limited structural uh, dimensions, to develop a kind of an inner structure which was a completely autonomous element in the middle of the building. And this also give, gave us the possibility to organize these uh, stairs that were so um, spatially developing around this central area. So if you follow here the... So here, from the ground floor, you, you are coming on a museum level that's going ar around that uh, central part. Then you have a big terrace as a first entrance to it. You can continue, that's a smaller terrace where you have the library and the administration. And then you continue and you have a big terrace over there that's the entrance of the academy. And from upside down, you can look to the entrance. So here, here you can see some moments in uh, the construction. For example, you can see here also the upper light that's in fact been worked out in bigger beams than that are behind but it had a double function. At that moment, we needed to make acoustics. So we did work it out as kind of big beams. And uh, it gives a kind of, It's more like a facade with big holes in it than it feels like a glass roof nowadays. Again, all kinds of little sketches on the way, and that's how it looks uh, from the Odan, looking over to the Schelde, the, the river. And in fact, the whole top has been, the top of the building that, where the fashion museum is, is a new uh, part. And the too big, the, that U upstairs is the, is the big atelier where you can overlook the city on all directions. And it was important for us to show all that students and jury people coming over uh, that they could look at the city from out of there. And then uh, on that steel structure, we made a wooden staircase and cladded the walls also with wood. But the wooden staircase is made by blocks, full, full blocks glued together. And uh, it's very massive because there's a lot of people and students going up and it couldn't be a normal wooden staircase with just wood, wood like this. We want it to be mass. Um, I always start with some kind of view from the sky because, in fact, it's very important where you construct or where you build, belonging to the context of being, first one at least. And here you see an old picture 
of a farmhouse along a house along the and a big uh, barn and well the house was in very bad state and it was it's in Holland in fact in the Netherlands and there was an opportunity what we do not have in Belgium I can say but we could go and discuss with a kind of a commission what to do and there were no prescriptions nothing so they were very enthusiastic to work together to find a solution for it and one of the first thing by visiting the area was um, well nowadays we don't the the house was standing along that deck dike what was that a hello dike a higher massive yeah, deck yeah okay <laughs> and it, it, the farmers were working the whole day on on their grounds somewhere and they were very happy by being at home and having some contact by passers by but nowadays people prefer to live more private and the sunny side is also the street side so uh, when i went on the building site i did choose a place in the corner It was a f uh, an orchard f with fruit trees and that was the best place to overlook see the the big barn overlook the garden and uh, I could discuss this with uh, people of the commission and they did agree and the second important thing was that you you enter from here you are going along the barn turn around the barn and then you see the new house but and the inspiration for it was what to do next to a big barn and because you can make a smaller house but it has not the character to be in balance with the bigness of that barn and I was thinking about the uh, pigeonier the pigeon towers and uh, we could talk with the commission to uh, to do this as as well because on the left photograph you see an old farm with a tower and that has been there very close by but in the meantime it was uh, b broken down but it was a reference for them so uh, we could go on with this ID and then we started to make designs and models just how to bring in that tower and how to find the ground and find the air higher up and that's a bit study and at the end you, you can see it at the left below you can see the house behind when you turn around that big barn he once had been making also designs for the barn because he wanted be, he wanted to have a swimming pool in it but this project has never been uh, finished so here more sketches and models and here yeah you can see the rough construction so you have that concrete tower with the chimney going from ground floor leading up that corner of the concrete element and then a wooden form that's embracing the orchid uh, and that's how it looks finished but wait after come now um so you, here you, we had only 800 cubic meter to be constructed so it should be very compact and dense and that's how it has been constructed in fact 
because even the thickness of the walls was important to gain square meters. That's why we ended up by a 20 centimeter concrete wall and there is some 15 centimeter wood uh, isolation, wood, wood fibers. Fiber. Wood fibers, yeah. Wooden. But there are other questions for that were important. Why to make it in concrete? Ali Dirk? I don't know anymore. <laughs> uh, no, there's, well, there's an advantage of concrete, of course, that it resists a lot of wind load, even if you make large openings. On the other hand, it provides you with some thermal inertia. Um, when uh, the temperature is always varying or can be very hot or very cold, uh, the thing we had to solve in this, it's not really solving, uh, is that, of course, the floors, which are also concrete, had to be supported uh, on the outside walls. And the concrete is on the outside. So we had to, in fact, a little bit remotely support them by means of dowels in between, which allows in the thickness of the insulation, there is a kind of a connection into the concrete wall with the floor by means of dowels. You know, there, are, there exist a lot of types of these kind of connectors, but these ones are just taking shear forces or transversal forces, you might say, uh, just transmitting the weight from the floor to the concrete wall. Um, and uh, of course you have this basement which uh, allows for compensation in the load that is put on the foundation and uh, the other volume of the annexing uh, wooden volume is much lighter of course and there's a kind of a support which transmits uh, loads to the chimney uh, in the wooden uh, part of the building. Here you can the see that, uh, that element, <laughs> that construction. Sometimes we have to hide some steel columns within the thickness of the wooden frames and, and so that you don't recognize them anymore as a kind of a supporting structural element, but they are part of the windows, in fact. You're asking a lot. <laughs> and well, the studies of the facade and the openings. Think about, yeah, there was a difficulty about some openings, small openings in that concrete wall looking north side. And that's how, how we introduce, in fact, that window. Get the, so you have the concrete and the wooden frame that's masked by steel. Katrug. Huh? Sorry. So here you see that we did use the northern facade by putting um, the wall heating on that uh, wooden fiber isolation. All details. My assistant is like the details, so she added a lot of details in the lecture. You find that very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so there is an elevator in it, but it's only a platform going up and down, and at the upper floor it's only a railing. So it uh, doesn't make any objection by looking through the building. And then, uh, yeah, I'm comparing this, or let's say it's more about the idea of what I, what I try to do is by making, in the most of the building, is trying to come at the moment that you feel some kind of quietness, silence, and it's it's very, yeah, it's very difficult to make something 
like quietness and, and silence to transform that in a material. It's a sense, in fact, that you want to translate in material. But it can help you when you're just thinking and detailing and trying to uh, give a solution to, to every question so that you are not uh, frustrated, like he calls it, <laughs> by things that are not being studied or that are really precise and well done. So you are very severe for the builders. And that's, yeah, here we come to another project. It was an existing roof, and there was a beam crossing on the level of the ice, and uh, so it was not usable. You couldn't stand up and walk through, and um, we did try first to bring uh, light in it, and secondly, we did try to take off that beam by not taking off the whole roof, but by making a kind of a sec second structure that brings over all the. Oh, sorry. So that's a kind of a triangular opening, and we did um, go the beams. Existing beams go on, so... So at the left, you, we made the model of it, and to the right you can see the existing. And then I leave it to Dirk to give some more explanation. There's a, a cut over here cut over there, and uh, which is, this is a model, this is the picture of a model, this is the real circumstance, but in the model it's more clear than in, well, maybe it's the wrong picture, I don't know. Um, but it explains very well the system, so we are cutting the tensional elements and replacing them with, in fact, a steel triangle, but the steel triangle in discussion with Jose, is not really just a flat element. It opens up and it spreads uh, to the ridge beam at the upper part, So, and it's composed of two U-shaped, uh, small U-shaped uh, steel beams um, bolted together. You can probably see this somewhere here in the picture, bolted together to form a kind of a replacing structure which transmits all the loads directly to the floor without being in the way and uh, turning it into, well, something that allows you to use the space more flexibly, more flexible. And in the meanwhile, also to give a more spatial um, translation of the existing structure and by using the third dimension in it. And this is uh, a house in Ghent, uh, close to the layer. It's the one. Brick. It has been taken ten years to have it there. We have been waiting four years because there was a house, an existing house on the plot, and the administration of monuments um, does not want it to be had objections that the house should be taken down, so we wait till the man was going uh, in retirement. In, in retiring. <laughs> and uh, in the meantime, we could, we could work on the project and let's say that, uh, well, the, the bow here, uh, the... Commissioner, com the, uh, the client. The client uh, <laughs> had been... Uh, he had been studying architecture once, and his daughter is architect. 
and she was working at my office at the time, but she never worked on that because it was too <laughs> difficult at home. And uh, so I had to... But they were very open, so we had a lot of discussions and, and we had four years just to make the study. And, well, here you see some beginning sketches. And that's what's the result. Because on the plot, there was a house, and to the left side, against that white building, there was a small uh, bar, also a house. And uh, we, uh, yeah, we wanted to keep the same um, implanting, I think, the same. Well, we wanted to, to be the buildings on the same place, let's say it like this. And um, so that's a bit the entrance. And there's a second entrance. And in, be yeah, that in between is the front garden, because everything is, in fact, behind that second porch. And um, they wanted that distance and privacy in it. Some more sketches and first designs. Oh, I'm already at the details. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Here you have a plan. <laughs> With small plan. Okay. Um, well, we did keep it like the the central entrance you you choose between the one side of the small apartment that's at the first floor and to the right side you enter the big house and in the so we we have a very big living room and you're passing by the kitchen before you are getting in that living room because the woman of the house likes to cook for people and friends coming over. So it was a kind of a heart of the house together with the fireplace. And then, yeah, upstairs you have a kind of arrangement of uh, rooms and because it took so much time to make yeah, to have a permit and the construction that all the children were out of the house. And, mm. uh, but no matter, they do like the place. And, um, and the, the, the small house to the right is now, the son is living in it. And one of the important things was we had to make um, an underground level that served for cars, wine, and administration things, and yeah, they, they needed a lot of space for all souvenirs they had of um, yeah, artworks and all that kind of things. And um, well, in fact, the it's a bit a garage underneath with a span, a big span, but the house above it is smaller than that, so Dirk has been doing the, the idea of the concrete. Um, yeah, we did that it. Yeah, it's, it's just explaining where the loads are coming from, and of course, sometimes instead of making two columns, you can easily, uh, more easily make uh, tapered columns. Um, and in the meanwhile, they contribute to the lateral stiffness also of it. Um, but, okay, sometimes we do this just for fun and we all have explanations for it. And so to it, but, uh, to it, uh. No, it's not true. And in fact, we had to bring in all that kind of thing, but I have no photographs of it. And we made all wooden boxes in it for being like a bit, a big, archive box for the wine, a big archive box for um, historical things and so on. And the 
when we were under construction, you could already see the frames that the, the garden was in relation to the house. And one of the central elements is that chimney in between kitchen dining and sitting room. And it's the only thing that's coming out of the underground level going to the rooftop. So in the same time, it's, it's at two sides. One side, it's an it's, um, open fireplace. The other side, it's more for barbecue to the kitchen side. And then all around it are all the pipes going up and down uh, because it should be all there coming together um, so that it, there was no implication near down nor up and all freedom uh, over the whole place. And there's something with the beams that uh, maybe because it's spent. Yeah. So w when you look at the beams, they seem to lack a dimension to have this span uh, in this way. So it, it almost resembles the Asplund canopy. But uh, in this case, the wood is in fact uh, a composed floor and it's just uh, ribs. And then it has a kind of a lost formwork on top of it with wooden planks. There, has been, there have been several, made several models just to compare uh, the distance between the beams and the height of the, of the, of the beams themselves below. Uh, and then there's a concrete slab of eight centimeters which really cooperates with it. So it's in fact a hybrid uh, composition of a concrete slab with wooden beams underneath. And uh, you have special dowels that you can use for them to make them uh, cooperating like that. And this allows you with lesser dimension for the beams, of course, but is of course more than you would just use uh, a concrete slab. But nevertheless, it's an interesting uh, combination between the wooden character and nevertheless having more massivity uh, for acoustical reasons, for thermal reasons, you might have you might have them, might have them, and also, of course, if you have um, uh, wet floors or whatever on top of it, it's always safer to have this kind of concrete floor. So this combination is really interesting and it becomes more and more interesting, especially because you can also apply it in existing situations where you have to adapt uh, a building to new uses or whatever. This is a useful way of doing it uh, and it's also fun. Uh, So in, in this house we have been going very far in detailing, also with furniture and uh, well, the gardening around. Uh, well, upstairs, for example, you have that uh, that was a big discussion with the lady of the house. She did not understand why she should go and sit there, and. Um, in the the husband and the man wanted in us wanted we should do it i I think it would be very nice we we can sit there and read the book because downstairs you never can look over the river you know and because the it the house is uh, on lower than the street side already, and there's a huge hedge along the along the street so uh, it's only from upstairs that you can see it, and it's in between the cupboards where you have all the clothes in it. So there you can, it's a long table where you can ply it. And there's a small um, drawer. drawer that you can open and put all little things that you find in your pockets and put in. And, uh, and Ignaz, he said, we will make one, because there are three of them. He said, we will make one, and the day that it was done, a lady of the house was sitting on it and smiling, and I got a photograph of, of Vinyas to tell, here we go, we can do them all, all three, <laughs> all the three of them. So sometimes it, it's preaching. <laughs>
So here you see that fireplace, and you see a big sliding door to the right. When you when you open it, it's in front of another window, and you are like sitting outside. They also designed all the cupboards at the left hand side and kitchen. And in the garden, there is the yeah, a swimming pool and a pool house. That's uh, in Ghent, with my neighborhood. I've been doing different projects in the surrounding. So you can see the small scale of uh, the houses. There's also some kind of rest of medieval housing. This is a, a house in front of my house, so I can look at something. At least I can like. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, it's uh, also with grey cement layer finishing. So, um, it's a very small plot going from street to, to, to the other street. And in between is a small courtyard. So you can see in the f in the first part of the house there's a kitchen and a, a table, and then you have a kind of corridor going to the backside where you can put bicycles. And at the same time, during the uh, working at sketches, we did change front door from the right turn street to the street behind. So this, oh. So in the front side, we have also a masked door, but she's taking part of the plinth under the windows. And it's a difficult plot because it's not perpendicular to the street. So with, with the roof, we went parallel with the main walls and the, the front. Uh, is following the street side. At the end, we, yeah, the client wanted to, to not only, I, I wanted to make only a covered uh, glass roof for going from the entrance side left to go to the house, only a, a glass covering, and he did ask to add doors in it. Ha. Details. It's very traditionally constructed, you know. It's not so traditionally constructed <laughs> because uh, for, for special reasons and to support the floors, uh, there had to be added several columns on, on very difficult spots, very close to the, <laughs> the, the walls with the neighbors. And uh, then, the, of course, these loads had to be transmitted over there. The columns had to be on, on micro-piling. And um, so, in fact, you had to organize a kind of a hidden structure that afterwards you don't see anymore, but that allows you to organize the space in such a way and the position of the walls in such a way that they contribute to the kind of spatial sequence that is organized. And afterwards you don't see anything about it, of course, but it's not so really traditional. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, it's in fact an inserted steel structure, once again, uh, in these kind of circumstances uh, where you want to make a more spatial uh, experience possible. Sometimes some floors are wooden, some are made of these kind of 
uh, beams and brick pots in between and then a concrete uh, finishing layer on top of it, in fact a compression layer on top of it. The weight is not that much, but if you compare it to the weight, normally in these uh, traditional houses or old uh, civil houses over there, all the floors are wooden. And the biggest load is in fact the load of the walls. But if you start introducing floors inside of this, it becomes different. Then the floors become the, the biggest loads. And then, uh, so this most of the time leads you to adapting also the foundations of it. Because the foundations are really accustomed to support this very low level loaded uh, circumstances. And then you add a lot, so, and then you have to adapt. Um, Celine is really very into detail. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Another, I don't know. Ah, it's, I should put my house in there. That's my house, in fact. <laughs> um, yeah, to the left side, you can see uh, the old houses where I, one of them I've been going to live in. Student. It was in this one, but it was in a very bad state. I rented it, and I did some renovation because everywhere it was leaking. And, and um, but it was a. When we finished studies, we had no work, so I had all. The, I could enjoy doing things myself, making by wood, and. Uh, I've been doing some masonry in it, just to test. And uh, I must say, I'm coming out of a family of constructors, so I know it's from somewhere. <laughs> so, and um, but my father couldn't help me because my mother did not want me to go to live there in that area, so he couldn't uh. come over until the moment that the. The owner of the whole street wanted to sell everything and he was still coming along to get every month the payment of the rent. So I did do him from every month, the same day coming and pay the rent. And uh, he said, I'm going to sell. So if you want, you have to take four of them. I said, whoa. <laughs> I'm not so fortunate, so I did there going to my father. And uh, my, my mother was angry about it, but my father said, we will do it. We will buy, we will see. So uh, from that time on, I had more than 10 years to make plans and uh, try to gain some money to construct a house later on. And I was, in fact, inspired, like you can see, on the street side, by that rhythm of the houses next to it, there were old workmen's houses. And um, I took over that rhythm like a kind of plus minus, just doing the inverse. And um, that was, yeah, not that I start with the facade, because I hate facades, but uh, I always start by making plans and interiors and then I try to make it becoming an outside and then I go back from outside to the inside. Here you see. Most of the sketches I made were done when we went to Italy and of course I was inspired by palazzos and all that kind of things. But the house where I lived in was had a very low ceiling and I was dreaming of a high ceiling. So I've, that was a very strong idea in it. There will be a high ceiling. And also, I, I, I do like the galleries in Sister Sienser Abbey's, and there also I did try to find out how to create the idea of silence in 
in a building, in a house or in another building. And uh, that's what I found back in a, in a gallery, kind of an in-between space between inside and outside. And uh, that's what I introduced in the house in different ways. First at the street side, um, I did put, because it's a very narrow street, I did put the doors already deeper than the facade, so you have already the idea that you're in the house and you only, yeah, you, you can even see the windows up there because it's a whole facade continuing on a second layer. And then you have the gallery as in in between uh, the patio and uh, the house. And here, you have some <laughs> details. Uh, at the left, be, uh, underneath, you can see that's the entrance. When you're inside, you can see the facade by looking through the windows. So inside, you feel the facade of the outside. And um, I've been designing also all the details of windows and so on. and. I did not want it to look after handles for uh, using to open uh, windows. And I did introduce them in the detailing of the wood. And then I've been doing a, a black, it's not really black, it's br brownish, but you feel that it's wood ceiling in the higher part and the gallery is white so that you have that confrontation of lowering and lightening and uh, the tricks of architects and then yeah here you have that uh, gallery from the courtyard and you can look through the house to the neighboring house oh must you hear now yeah that's one thing with, with this house and Dirk because it's a very narrow street, we couldn't do anything of uh, pilers in the ground because it was too expensive and yeah, Dirk had the another point. idea. No, no, we just calculated uh, the probable difference in settlements if we wouldn't apply any kind of piling underneath because it's the same spot as the former project you saw. So we in fact needed piling, but if we calculated the amount of settlement that would arise from it, we could in fact predict also the kind of cracks that would appear. And this was very well uh, studied because the, crack the, the cracks appeared where we expected them and you only had to in fact finish them afterwards and so on. And they didn't reappear? No. No, they didn't reappear uh, afterwards. So was it was just a matter of calculating differences in settlements and applying another strategy. Because, of course, in these kind of circumstances, you need a lot of trust in one another, otherwise you can't I do it. I never this. do it for clients. <laughs> That's very dangerous. But, but the other thing is, it's a structure of a boat. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. at one meter, you're on water level, yeah. so you made some concrete yeah. ribs, and then they are going in, in the columns, where I did put cupboards in between. Yeah. So that's also one also. of the ideas coming from how to make a balance on that <laughs> bat underground. And one of the last parts, it's, it has always been a dream of us of making bridges together. And why bridges? Because, well, it's, there are many things about bridges. First, they connect things that have never been connected, and it's a new meeting place. Secondly, uh, you organize views from a place there where you normally not are not coming. And, uh, and like you have more home, more garden, you can say more bridge, that's what we have been trying to do. We have been doing a lot of competitions and... We never won. We never won. <laughs> so it's not a good idea to... 
We never had a quite good idea, <laughs> but we will explain one of them because it has to do with this picture. It, it's a, a view. You're coming over a bridge and then you have a continuing view in, in a kind of a lane with trees. And here you see those two circles. There were two bridges that should be made for connecting the city by the city park. And it's on an old railway track. So it's a real line in the landscape. And they had been planting trees along it uh, during time, so that in the center, in between those two circles, you have a lane with trees. And ah, so here you can see it in the drawing, it's really one line. And the most important of this was the idea of the, the bridge of the, the railway. So they have special constructions for it, and they mostly are laying on two big concrete or constructed stone massifs. And they were a bit the, the background for how we can connect, with, because the most difficult with the bridge is how you connect the bridge with the ground. Because if you're going like this, it's ending on a zero point. So in that little triangle, nothing happens, you know? So now, and now there is a bridge like this, where nothing happens. <laughs> but we wanted to make it more like kind of an architectural, uh, giving it a more architectural view. And so here you see a bit the environment where we were working in. Ah, Dirk, here, here, that's yours. I will explain it very fast. Uh, you know, the, the idea rose that since it was in fact on, um, on the line of a former railway, uh, there was also some kind of historical reference to this kind of, this was part of the context we thought to organize this. So we developed several models uh, and looking at different proportions in all kind of trusses that we would have been able to use. So it's very simple. It's just a trust bridge and um, it's, it's, you can use very thin members as long as you have sufficient, uh, a sufficient amount of them and you just have to organize the proportion. And then as Jose said, uh, it's in fact how this kind of bridge lands or uh, links to the ground and to the level that is in fact uh, more important uh, in this case uh, most notably but very often it is the most important thing yeah. so here you see design of that bridge with at both sides how to get up and down because it it was only for pedestrian and cyclists and uh, maybe I have a better picture. Yeah. The bridge rises on the spot where the bending moment is the biggest and the diagonals get closer to one another, closer to the supports where the transversal forces are the biggest. So that's the kind of logic that is behind this kind of proportional research. But that's something you can read from the pattern. And then now we go back to the landing. Of the <laughs> okay. Yeah, the landing. <laughs> I, I don't have a real good design. Ah, here, that's better. So, we have one side of it is is uh, uh, with a staircase, like curved out of the concrete, and the other side is a, is a, g a ground uh, talus, where you can cycle up. So you, have, you can easily cycle up. But in, you always pass under, through that uh, point, that central point, let's say. Oh. So here, you have an underneath space where you, when you're coming from there, you can go up there, cycle like this, and then continue over the bridge. Or from underneath, you take the staircase coming up, going over the bridge. And this, this was the importance that you have when you're 
finishing at the end of the bridge, you're looking in that lane. But that earth um, body is, is always the site of... Because at one side we had a park, and it's along a very um, ring road with a lot of noise. So in the same time, that sh should be a kind of a, a earth wall and keeping out the noise. And at the other side, it's, it's at the <laughs> also at the other side where there is a school. So we did make that going up. And the earth wrote this, the site of the school. So that's what we did try to explain with it. And at the, kind, at the site of the park, we made a kind of b b uh, bench underneath. We saw it as a meeting place, or when it was raining, where you could keep a bit dry by waiting, or a meeting place underneath, uh, where you are on the crossing of the, yeah, the ring road and the side road in the lane. But it wasn't very successful. <laughs> and then, but we made the bridge. And, <laughs> and it's in Dense, where I've been doing a lot of... Well, there is already the marketplace and then the borders of the Leia area. And then the market been doing and all the plantings along. And then the next part was making this connection, going to the other side, connecting a new part of uh, housing. Uh, and so that uh, people with bicycles don't have to cross along a very road is more or less a car entrance to the city and that bridge is a bit it should open because there is still uh, traffic on the water and uh, yeah it's uh, it's first of all to to uh, to the river sides two concrete elements that are taking a bit the line of because with the bicycle you don't want to end up you, you, you must keep, make some curves so we, we introduce it already the, the, the line of the traffic and then it's going more or less this way because now there is even a second bridge a bit deeper there and um, yeah, that's a so that word that so you you can see here what we did wanted to do with that going in traffic and then having a smallest part possible that's opening, and we were making well that's also about landing. With with a bridge in the so here you have that design of that pivot that's taking up the bridge and the the left leg is really the whole construction of the piston that pushing up the bridge here you can see it along so you're coming along the it's the Mary the 
down, town hall. down house, town hall, and then you continue the river, and then you have the bridge. Um, what we did not have designed were, in fact, you see the both uh, railings for boats. It looks like it's it's like we are in Antwerp, you know, where big boats are coming in. So it's a, we we thought it would be wooden wooden beams going in the water, but uh, the company that put this. And now we are busy with a, a, a bridge that oh, that's continuing of what we are doing now. Um, so here you can remark that's the bridge that's opening, and then this is a kind of an old part of the river. That well, the layer is meandering like this all the time, and they have been some areas they have been tracing it on a straight line because there's yeah there's still boat traffic on it. And, um, time, the city of Denze want to connect this going over here, and then you come at a railway. Where there is a uh, snellweg, uh, oh, highway, bicycle, bicycle highway, <laughs> highway. So they want to connect it to that bicycle highway go, going from Kortrijk to to Ghent, and that's they want to connect it from there to the city of Deense. So we have been that this is now a bit a kind of an island, and there is a pedestrian part already walk along the river but we wanted to cross through it and we will plant it by trees so it's a lane uh, along a part of the island this part of the island is more private and this part is belonging to the city so we are reorganizing this plot as a kind of uh, yeah as a kind of sitting in a park, continuing. So here you, it, it's very close to a church. And that's reflecting on how you can move from one place to the other. That's the, the bridge we will make. In fact, because there's no traffic on it, it's still water, so they are only fishing along it. And there's no movement, um, because we have tides till, uh, till the Eense, by first by the Schelde and then the Lee, and it can move for half a meter. And this, we, we would like to see it more a feeling that you're not really walking over a bridge because we are doing with the railing, we are working with wooden uh, elements going till the level of the water. That's a bit the detailing of, and that's the bridge. Well. That's a bridge with the church. And then you have the walking area along the water and then you have the cycling coming over over through the island. And that's the end. That's uh, A fantastic uh, lecture. We are really happy to have you here. Uh, we will.
not having a, a, a questions right now, but Marie Jose and Dirk are here for a while, and we stay a bit in here or maybe outside. And if there are any questions, and you want to put a particular one to, to very welcome to do so. After, thank you. Mm -hmm.